Welcome, this is Information Service Engineering. Lecture number one, Information, Natural Language and the Web. In this section of the lecture, we want to talk about how to measure information. So, for that, of course, we have to ask again, what is information? And there might be several answers. If you ask the dictionary, it says information is that which informs, so that doesn't give you much more. So information, we know this already, is conveyed as the content of a message. As well as information can be encoded into various forms for its transmission and interpretation. We know this from the communication process already. Likewise, information is any propagation of cause and effect within a system. So this is rather important for information theory as well as for physics. Another interesting fact that you might find out is that information's existence is not necessarily coupled to anyone who observes it. It's simply there. If we look at it from the viewpoint of information theory, then information is that which reduces uncertainty. And this also will be our standard definition for any let's say, analysis of information in natural language processing that we do here in the lecture. So, from the viewpoint of information theory, information reduces uncertainty. What does that mean? It means the uncertainty of any kind of event, of course, is measured by its probability of occurrence. And those two, of course, are inversely proportional, which means the higher the likelihood that, uh, of course, an event occurs, the, the higher also is its probability. However, its uncertainty, if it's much likely to occur, is then rather low. On the other hand, if the probability of its occurrence is rather low, then the uncertainty about it, of course, is high. So this is also how information is measured. You have this uncertainty, which is connected to the probability of occurrence of an event, and of course, the more information um, is required to resolve this uncertainty, the less frequently is the probability of its occurrence. So the more certain an event, the more information is required to resolve the uncertainty of exactly that kind of event. So you will see a few examples, then of course this definition gets much clearer. Okay, how do we model that? We do this usually with the standard means of probability theory. So we have a discrete random variable. And let's say we have this random variable x. This takes a value, a specific value x from an alphabet. We also call this x now with a capital letter and a pr specific probability. So this is p sub x of x. So this is the specific probability of okay uh, that our random variable x takes the value x. And for the specific uh, let's say distinct values the uh, variable might take, we create a vector of probabilities. And this is the so-called probability mass function. And now for specific events, we can develop or describe this probability mat fu mesh, uh, mass function. So for example, if I toss a coin, a coin usually has two sides, head or tail. And if the coin is even, then, of course, the likelihood or the probability for one side or the other is one half. This means the probability mass vector, the probability by which this um, coin takes either head, this is the first place, or tail, this is the second place, is always one divided by two. It's one half. For dice tossing, it's quite similar. If the dice also is a just dice, if it's even with six sides, then, of course, all have the same probability, which is then one divided by six, that exactly number one, number two, number three, number four, five or six occurs when I throw the dice. A different situation is here in German language. So if I look, you know, what, how, how, what's the probability of occurrence of a specific letter of our alphabet in German language, then of course, this is not evenly distributed. We all know that vowels, for example, occur much more frequently than consonants, and especially vowels like E or I, they are occur, occurring rather frequently. On the other hand, of course, you have, um, let's say, uh, consonants like Y or, or Q, they occur rather rarely. So here you can look up 
simply follow that link you can also look up the uh, probability mass function so the probability of occurrence of a specific letter in German language or also in other languages. So this is simply for describing the behavior of these kind of events. If you want to describe the information that is in there, this has first been proposed by uh, Claude Shannon, Claude Elwood Shannon. So he's a famous American mathematician, electrical engineer, and also a cryptographer. And he is in general known as the father of information theory. So he is known for having founded information theory with a landmark paper in 1948, which was a mathematical theory of communication. In this work, he focused on the problem on how best to encode the information a sender wants to transmit. And he used tools of probability theory, so like we do this right now. And he developed a notion of information entropy as a measure of the information content in a message, which is a measure of uncertainty reduced by the message while essentially inventing the field of information theory. So what's now this Shannon information content? How is it computed? We said already as a measure of uncertainty, uncertainty reduction, it is inversely related to the probability of occurrence. So therefore, what we are doing here is we simply use the logarithm on base two of the probability. And of course, we take its negative value. Why the negative value? So if you know about logarithm, you know, probability has always uh, a range between zero and one. So it's not larger than one, which means each logarithm, if you know the logarithm function, always if it's below zero, so between zero, uh, if it's below one, so between zero and one, it's always a negative value. And therefore we have here um, the negative sign, so in front of it. So it's the negative logarithm at base two of the probability of a specific letter or of this event. And the unit to measure this information is the bit. You have for sure heard of bits. So this is the abbreviation of binary digit. Or you can also say it's the basic in dissoluble oh, information unit. So this is a tongue twister. I see that. So what Shannon did here, he laid out the mathematical foundations based on probability theory to describe what is the information content. And there was another scientist, Warren Weaver. He published a few years later an article that discussed all the implications of Shannon's more technical work for the general audience. And he pointed out that the word information in communication theory is not related to what you say, but what you could say. That is, information is a measure of one's freedom of choice when one selects a message to transmit for a specific information. Okay, let's have a look. Information content of our probability events we have here. So again, coin tossing, you know, the probability mass function is one half and one half. And the Shannon information content of that simply put one half into the formula that you have seen. And then you see that both are representable by one bit. That's the Shannon information content of exactly these events. This is completely different if you look at, for example, the event my birthday, of course, only on one day during the year, and this is not a leap year, I will have a birthday. So the likelihood that on any given day, it's my birthday, is it's rather low. On the other hand, the likelihood that on any given day, it's not my birthday, it's rather high. And likewise, you see that your birthday can be encoded here with 8.512 bits, while not my birthday, of course, has much lower information content because it's much more likely to take place. So this would be then the Shannon information content of the event, it's my birthday or not my birthday. And based on that Shannon information content, he developed the information content of a message which is then the entire entropy. And what you do here is you take the information content of each symbol of the message and multiply it with its relative frequency. It occurs, so this is the probability it has. So thereby you come up with the following formula that you see here. You see here um, the following thing. So you, we have here um, the probability of the occurrence of a symbol 
Here we have the Shannon information content and all of this is summed up. And in the end, you have also to multiply it with the length of the message to get the information content of the entire message. Okay, let's do this in practice. So here I have a small example. We have here the string information service engineering and there is a web application down here. You see a link, we can click on that link and then you get, you come to a website with lots of advertisements, simply ignore the advertisements. You can put in here information service engineering. I will write it. So it's information service engineering and then you press calculate and what this thing does, it calculates you the Shannon entropy of this, which means then for each, let's say single character that we have used and also here the blank character is used. So the space character you see here, um, this has a specific likelihood of occurrence. You see here how frequently it occurs. And then the Shannon entropy is computed according to the formula we have seen and then hx, so the entropy, which is here the arbitrary uh, or, or the average entropy in this message comes up to 3.48375 bits. If we go back here to our formula and have a look then on what we compute here, then exactly this part of the formula here, the average is exactly this part. And if you want to get the information content of the entire message, then of course you have to multiply it here with the length of the message, with, which is 31 characters. And then you come to 107.99, which comes roughly to 108 bits. Okay, this is how we measure information by simply taking the notion for information as a reduction of uncertainty. Now we want to apply everything we have already learned. And of course, we already know that we are talking about the web and there is of course lots of information. And this exactly is what we are going to address in the next section of the lecture.